I just want to extend my appreciation to all of my colleagues and personally thank all the voters of Montgomery County uh, for electing me to a second term as your at-large council member and honoring me with the privilege of serving this county for another four years. I promise to serve with humility and dedication while also spotlighting the needs of residents from all corners of our community. I also want to thank my husband, Jason, who is here in the audience, uh, for being by my side, for lifting me up and inspiring me every single day. Um, and I also want to honor the memory of my mother, Mona Glass, who raised me as a single mom and instilled in me the courage to pursue my passions and the values that guide my public service. I also want to thank my team, led by Valeria Carranza and Pam Luckett, and David Lorenzo, and Joy Champaloo, and Josh Lash, and Dory Hightower. Uh, your hard work is for the benefit of every resident of Montgomery County, and your commitment is brought every single day when you come into this building, and I want to say thank you. Uh, and last but not least, thank you to my colleagues, those who've returned and those who are new for instilling your faith in me to preside over this body as council president for the next year. Uh, as we have had conversations over the last number of months preparing for this day, I will continue my priority of collaboration, making sure that we work together for the benefit of our residents, but also that we work with County Executive Mark Elridge, Governor-elect Wes Moore, all of our colleagues in Annapolis, all of our local stakeholders, and our residents to make sure that the Council's work is focused, productive, and meaningful. And as we sit at this crossroads, ushering in a new legislative session, I also want to recognize our former colleagues, Tom Hucker, Nancy Navarro, Craig Rice, and I see our friend Hans Riemer, who's here. Thank you, Hans, for joining us this morning, for, for your years and everyone's years of service to this body and this community. And I'm also proud to continue serving alongside Councilmember Gabe Albernaz and Andrew Friedson, Will Jawando and Sidney Katz, um, but if I can, I'm really excited to serve alongside the six new members who are joining us today. Council members Marilyn Balcom, Natalie Fani Gonzalez, where did you move to? You're over there now. Uh, Don Ludke, Kristen Mink, Lorianne Sales, and Kate Stewart. Um, I have admired each of you. I have seen your work. I've watched your passion and your advocacy for many years, and I'm glad to be sitting alongside you today. Um, together, this is the most diverse and representative council in our county's history. And we should all be very, very proud of that. And when voters two years ago approved the charter amendment that I introduced, expanding the size of the council to better reflect our county's beautiful diversity, I did not expect the results to look like this. Uh, but looking at this dais, the results have exceeded my expectations. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you and listening to your unique perspectives that I know each of you will bring to this body and the great work that we're going to do collaboratively to move Montgomery County forward. And this year marks the first chapter of the 20th Council of Montgomery County. And it's a transition to new leadership. And it's a new era and a new time for us all to reflect on where we want to go, but also take a look at what we have done together. We should all be proud of our recent accomplishments. We survived a global pandemic by having the highest vaccination rates in the country. We worked collaboratively with nonprofit and community partners to protect tenants and families, assist small businesses, and support our frontline county employees. We did all of this while prioritizing public health, education, and economic development. We addressed long-standing inequities that were exacerbated by the pandemic. We upheld our status as the only county in this nation to maintain a triple A bond rating for nearly 50 years. And we also passed historic legislation to address the climate crisis, public safety, and social inequities. But we all know there's a lot more work to do to make Montgomery County a fair and more equitable place. And as I take on this role as council president, my promise is to push forward social policies that are more just, ensure that our most vulnerable are healthy, safe, and housed, all doing so while setting us up for long-term success by being a responsible steward of our taxpayer dollars. And with the collaboration from the executive branch, our state and federal partners, 
we are going to make that happen. And we also have to address the county's persistent health inequalities and continue working to resolve them. As the council's former member on the Health and Human Services Committee and the lead for homelessness and vulnerable communities, I'm proud of our strong and continued support of the minority health programs and their work to enhance health care and access to social services to provide help for our most vulnerable residents. Having worked in the nonprofit sector myself, I know all too well the increasing needs and demands in our community. It's our nonprofit sector that plays a vital role in keeping our social safety net strong, and in turn, we must give them the tools and support that they need to maintain those critical services. In Montgomery County, we recognize that shelter is a fundamental right and believe that everyone should be able to live comfortably and age in place. And in the year ahead, we must redouble our commitment to making the experience of homelessness rare, brief, and non-recurring. And I'm confident that this council will also meet the moment by addressing housing stability and the diverse housing needs of our residents. I'm also committed to building upon the progress we've made toward achieving transit equity. We know that the greatest determination of a person's economic mobility is their ability to travel to school or work. And one of my top priorities since joining this council has been to increase access to our vast bus system. I spearheaded the effort to make buses free for all kids all the time, and last year we as a body made all bus fares only one dollar, reducing them to one dollar. And moving forward, I'll continue pushing for free buses for all residents because we know it's good for easing traffic congestion, it's good for those who cannot afford to own a car, and it's good for our environment. But for those who take the bus, we often know that there are sometimes dangerous roads that they walk to get to that bus stop. We've lost too many lives on our roadways and we need to take urgent action to end these preventable tragedies. In, two, in 2022 alone, we've already lost 16 people, pedestrians and bicyclists, neighbors and friends. And we've also seen 488 of our neighbors injured while simply using our roads. I will continue working to make common sense traffic solutions a priority during this presidency so that every resident can walk, bike, and commute safely around our community. We need these generational improvements in our infrastructure so that we can enhance public transportation and enhance connections between our region's job centers, schools, and neighborhoods. And I look forward to working with the Moore administration and our state and federal partners on transportation projects that will advance modern traffic solutions, make our roads safer, and enhance regional connectivity. Equally important are the meaningful steps we're taking to improve our climate resilience, reduce our climate footprint, and mitigate climate change. We know that our frontline communities and communities of color bear the initial burden of climate change, and that our children and grandchildren will face the most damaging effects. And this past year, we made significant strides in passing environmental legislation to reduce waste and transition to clean energy sources. We opened the Brookville Bus Depot, the largest solar charging infrastructure project in the United States, which will provide renewable energy and charge up to 70 electric buses by 2026. And we passed several key pieces of legislation aimed at addressing the county's biggest contributors of greenhouse gas emissions, our building sector. And in the year ahead, we're continuing to take bold action that moves us closer to reaching our climate goal of eliminating gas emissions by 2035. That is this county's stated goal. And we recognize that the climate crisis is real and we must act like it. I'm also proud of the work that we've done over the last few years to support our small businesses and attract companies in emerging fields like biohealth and technology. And by supporting businesses and creating a friendly business environment for aspiring entrepreneurs, we're going to make Montgomery County a leader in our rapidly growing and increasingly competitive metropolitan area. We're already the fourth largest biohealth cluster in the United States, and we have to build on those successes. And one way I intend to do that is by creating a new council committee that is devoted to discussing, analyzing, and improving our economic development efforts. And that's why working with my colleagues here on the dais, 
We, we are and have created an economic development committee, which will be able to spend more time and energy on conversations to grow our business sector, attract more Fortune 500 companies from around the country, retain the businesses that already call Montgomery County home, and at the same time, we're going to address major social economic concerns, like closing the racial wealth gap, wage inequality, and reducing barriers for small and minority businesses. And in closing, by the time my tenure ends as council president, I hope to build upon all of this good work and make Montgomery County a more fair and equitable place where residents of all backgrounds can live, worship, work, raise a family, and age in place. And we're going to redouble our efforts to make sure that everybody feels welcome, seen, and safe in Montgomery County. With the increasing rise in hate and violence against members of the Jewish faith and the LGBTQ plus community, especially trans women of color, we are going to continue making sure that hate has no home here in Montgomery County. And there is no doubt that there are going to be challenges and obstacles ahead, but I believe this council is up to the task. Each of our unique perspectives and collective lived experiences is exactly what is needed at this time. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you to do the good work that the 1.1 residents of M Montgomery County have elected us to do. And with that, let's get to work. Thank you.